This is part of a series of videos on LC3 programming. In this specific video, which is going to be in two parts, I'm going to talk about data structures. And abstract data types. These are two terms that are used by people often in, in computer science. I want to make a clear distinction between what a data structure is and what an abstract data type is. So in a nutshell, when you're looking at data from an implement and implementation standpoint, you're looking at the how of things, which is what an implementation perspective is. That's when we talk about data structures. But when we look at the what of things, which is from a user standpoint, not from the implementation, but from the use standpoint, we are looking at an abstract data type. So let's Let's kind of understand what we mean by that. So how can we organize data or structure data? The simplest form of data structures for us are we looked at a array and a linked structure. I'm not going to call it a linked list. I'm going to call it linked structure an array structure and a linked structure. The idea of an array is that the elements are stored contiguously. So we have elements or items that are stored contiguously and each item is of the same size. A linked structure on the other hand they don't have to be stored contiguously, but there's some sort of a linking mechanism between the nodes. So there is still a notion of the which is before which and which is after which item, but the way it is implemented, the way it is internally stored is by using some sort of a link. So an abstract data type for us, because we're talking in terms of a use, we can think of a list as an abstract data type. A list can be implemented both using an array or a linked structure. When do you use one versus the other? It all depends on what, what your particular uh, uh, use of the list is. If a list is one where we are doing a lot of, uh, uh, so let's look at a list uh, from a perspective of a use. What do we do with a list? We add to the list, we get something from the list, get an element from the list, add element, get element. In fact, when we add an element, we typically say, I want to add an element at a particular position and element itself that we want to add. And get element, we just say get element at a position and it will return a value to us, which is the element itself, right? Um, we could do, for example, insert an element. And again, we can say add element uh, is uh, actually, let's let's do delete an element because add is exactly what that is. So we can do delete an element or remove an element. Again, I just specify the position and I remove the element. So, so in some sense, a list can be implemented. the The key to remember is a list can be implemented either using a an array or a linked list. Now the question of which one you prefer to use depends on what kind of accesses you perform. Say you are doing a lot of just get elements and if you're doing a lot of lookups, right, if lookups dominate your use, 
then maybe an implementation of array is better because that will be make it faster. Array is preferred. Whereas if you do a lot of modifications, that is you do adds and deletes a lot, a lot of modifications, then a linked structure is better. So, so often we think of data structures more when we people use the word data structure what they're really talking about is a abstract data type in other words it is what it's not just what answers the what but more specifically it answers what operations can be performed Right? The what is answered by what operations are allowed on the, on the thing. So let's take a few examples and we can, we can, uh, we can um, nail the definition. A list is an abstract data type. We will look at a stack as an abstract data type. And we will see a queue is an extra abstract data type. On a list, we said that the operations we can perform on it are, are add or insert, get or remove. On a stack, the operations we will perform are just two operations, a push or a pop. On a queue, we will perform operations like an NQ and a DQ. In fact, there are other op other data structures which I'm not going to talk about, but you will learn as you go along. There's a data structure called a tree, for example, or a data structure for a called a graph. And there are operations you can perform on these structure data structures. Now, on, on these abstract data types. Internally, the implementation can be anything. It doesn't really doesn't really matter as far as the operations are concerned. If your focus is on on performance and and um, getting the best out of out of your operations, then you're you're going to go down and look at the actual data structure. So so we do often um, go between the abstract data type and drill down into the implementation and look at the actual data structure that achieves the purpose of whatever this operation is concerned. Um, my friend John likes to use the word, when, when it comes to abstract data types, he likes to use the word interface. That is, what are the operations that, what, how do we interact with this particular data structure more than more than how it is um, achieving its purpose, interface versus implementation. So in this, in this first part of my two-part video, I'm gonna focus on one such abstract data type, which is a stack. And um, on the LC3, we've already used, a st we made use of a stack, which is the LC3's system stack. which happens to be in memory at a specific location, which is at x2fff, and the stack, as we said, grows that way. So the operations we, uh, we can actually perform are the push and pop operations, but there is no instructions for doing it. This LC3 system stack is, is used both, as we will see late, used in both traps and interrupts and it's auto mat it's automatic in its use is automatic in that the hardware is the one that does the push and the hardware does the pop of things off of this uh, in response to uh, in the case of trap in response to a trap we do a push in response to an RTI, we do a pop. 
In the case of interrupts, it's the same thing. Uh, in response to an uh, event, we do a event corresponding to a, uh, the interrupting device. We perform a push. And again, um, once we finish our uh, response to it, we do a pop. But right now, I'm more interested in uh, writing such structure from scratch. So, data type from scratch. So let's look at a stack in terms of how we would implement it. Um, I'm going to uh, write my data structure in my abstract data type, uh, thinking of it as a, a black box, if you will, and, and there are three operations that it allows. Uh, the three operations are first some sort of an initialization function, I'll call this a stack init function a push operation and a pop operation. These are the three it allows. So if you were to flush this out, um, the pop operation will, uh, will in response to call of the pop operation, it will pop in register R0 for us, uh, the element that we want to pop, and it also puts in some register R5 a failure, a success, or failure, because it's perfectly possible that we are trying to pop off a, off a stack that is empty. So if we try to pop off an empty stack, we get a failure. If we pop off a, off a stack that has some elements, then R0 will have the value, and the success will be indicated. In my case, I'm going to in indicate the success and failure by, um, by a uh, zero being a failure and one being a success. Uh, you could do it any any way you want, but I chose that as my interface. Um, we have uh, similarly uh, a push operation, and the push operation actually takes a register um, as an input. So we give an input, which is the element we want to push. R not holds the element we want to push, and it doesn't return. Uh, it returns still an R five value, which is either a success or a failure. Again, we'll use uh, zero for failure and one for success. Uh, we're we're using a stack in it so that we can specify in some register R not what the capacity of my stack is, what is my max capacity of my stack, how big a stack I want to create. That's my, my stack in it. It doesn't return anything, so I'm not going to bother talking about what it, what, what it does other than just set everything up. So here is my implementation of it. Here is my stack in it. So the way I'm going to implement my stack is I will choose a location. In my case, I'm choosing that my stack will be at a location. The bottom of the stack is going to be at some location, which in our case is x4000. That's what that is, a stack bottom. And my stack is going to grow that way. So what I'm going to do initially is I'm going to keep track of where the my bottom of my stack, I'll keep track of a size which the user is going to tell me. So remember, when we call this function, we're going to pass in R0 the capacity. And if the, let's say, for example, R0 is equal to, let's say, 5, then what we will do is we will write to this location the number 5 that tells me what the size of the stack is. And the stack pointer is our way of keeping track of where we are currently at. So if I say, at some point, I had pushed a few items. So as I push items onto the stack, let's say I pushed a 22, a 13, and a 4 on the stack, then what we want to keep track is where is the top of my stack, if the top of my stack, which is that. And the top of the stack is the stack pointer. And initially, because my stack is empty, I'm going to stack, set my stack pointer to the stack bottom, which initializes to x4000 as well. Yeah. So that should be pretty straightforward. So let's take a look at how our stack operations both work. So here's our stack 
push. Uh, recall that push involves v involves us writing elements to the stack. So right now this is my x4000 which is the bottom of my stack. If I were to add an item to the stack then what will happen as I, as we know is this one gets a input of r0 which is the element that we want to push. It's the element to push. So let's assume that at some point we had four elements or three elements on the stack and right now we say we had three elements on the stack. There was a 22, a 13 and let's say a four on the stack and my stack pointer, um, I'm going to simply represent it by a stack pointer is pointing to that location. And so that's my stack pointer right there that I'm using. So first thing I'm going to check in my code is I, I'm going to see if I've reached the capacity. So I'm going to load the current size, which in this case is going to be equal to three. And say we initialized our, our capacity to be, let's say, right, assume, let's assume that my capacity is equal to five, which in this first step, all I'm really doing is I'm checking if I've reached the capacity. So this is where I check if I reach the capacity. If I reach the capacity, which is if I take the difference between the two and they're equal, then I've reached the capacity and I'm going to go off from here to here, which is my way of saying that if I come here, then R5, which I initialized to zero, R5 is zero. And we're saying that you're trying to push to a full stack. So we're just going to restore our registers that we saved there which, which we, because we're using them to work on our problem here. So we're going to restore and we get out. Now here's, here is the more normal path. That is you have room in your array which is in this case we do have room. So we're going to load the stack pointer into register R2. We will first decrement the stack pointer to point there. And then we will store the value that is in R0. R0 has, let's say, in this particular example, R0 is my next element. Let's say I have the number 42 I'm trying to add. So the store is going to add the number 42 there. And store is going to add the number 42 there. And then I'm going to uh, uh, add one, because I already decremented the stack pointer, I'm going to go ahead and uh, write it out. So I updated the stack pointer, which previously was, let's say this is x4000, means this is x3fff, 3ffe, 3ffd, and now it was previously at x3ffd which is where it was. So now as soon as I update it, it's going to go from that to 3ffc, which is exactly this location. Because now we have four elements. So we just update the, st if we update the stack and we also set, update our stack size because there's one more element. So we increment here and then we return a, a, a success, which is this here is a success, and we fall through and we return. Here is our pop. Pop is kind of identical, except, um, actually, let's do this. Let's go here, and we will... Do our pop right now so let's erase everything else that we have and let's assume that this is what the stack pointer looks like right now and I perform a pop on this so in other words I called this and there's nothing passed into it but I expect the pop will return in R0 the number in our case it will return the number 42 that's our 
expectation. So let's go to the motions. Um, again, pop has to guard against an empty stack. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is I'm gonna load the stack size and I'm gonna see if it's equal to zero. So this is the path. This is the failure path, which is I, I check if I have an empty stack and I jump off to this location and I get out, right? Whereas the, the successful path is that we find that it's not empty. In this case, it's not empty. So we're gonna load the stack pointer. We're gonna pop the element. This is actually a read. So we this one gets R naught to be equal to 42. And then we're gonna increment the stack pointer. So we add R2 plus one and we write it back. So this one is gonna go back from three FFF, three FFC to back to three FF d because we've incremented it we write it back and our size now has been decremented so we have decremented our size because we popped one element and the stack size has been updated straightforward so let's put all of this together in a simple example so we're going to test our stack code by by writing a simple program the purpose of this program is for us to on the console we're gonna uh, we're gonna prompt the user to either add an element or remove an element and add for us plus is to push because it's a stack for us plus is to push an element on the stack and minus is to pop an element on the stack so our console interaction might look something like this so if, for example if i say uh, plus and I put the number two, let's say, then the stack will currently have a two on it. And if I do a plus another and say 15, then there's gonna be a 15 on the stack. In fact, I, I don't think my example allows uh, two, two characters. It only allows, allows one character, so I'll do that. If I do a plus A, it's gonna put an A on the stack. Now, if I do a minus after that, then right now my stack pointer would be pointing here. If I do a minus, what I would see on the screen is an A printed out because that was the last thing that was put on the stack. Remember that our access mechanism of our stack is a last in first out, which is the basic idea of a stack, which we talked about earlier. But the last item I put was an A, so that's what I would see off the stack. If I do another uh, plus, let's say a seven, then this would have a seven on the stack after that. And now if I do another minus, then I'll see a seven off the stack. So that's the idea behind it. So the rest, most of the code is self-explanatory. All I'm really doing in my code is I'm initializing the stack. So because I'm using this abstract data type, I am first gonna initialize it. So my my code has has my initialization here which sets the capacity. My capacity in this case is five, so I'm gonna set it to five, and then I'm gonna prompt the user, um, and then I'm going to read what the user gives in. If the user gives in a, a plus, then I'm here. If the gives, user gives me a minus, then I, I come here because I check if it's a check minus is a place I'm gonna, um, I'll show you in the actual code. So I come here if it's a minus and I perform a pop if it's a minus, if it's a plus, I perform a push and so on. So I'll actually walk you through this code in, in, uh, in the simulator. So here is our stack program. Um, our, here's our initialization. So I'm gonna assemble this and here's the actual code which it initially checks if I have a plus. If it's a plus, then I fall through here. If it's a mi if it's not a plus, then I'll go and check if it's a minus and compare it against the minus character. If it is, if it's not a minus, then I'm done. So my the way I quit my program is to type in something other than a plus or a minus and my program quits. So let's go ahead and run it first and see how it works. So I assembled it, I'm gonna run it and I will clear the console and I will initially just run it and see what I get. So it asks, prompts me for a command. So I'm gonna type in a plus followed by, let's say the number two. So it's put that on the console. Let's do another plus with a five and a plus with an A. So I'm gonna do a minus now. I should get an A out because that was the last thing that was pushed. If I do a 
plus and seven then it'll be seven will be on the stack let's do a couple of pluses uh, right now there are three elements on the stack let's do a plus uh, q and a plus six and let's do another plus because right now i've reached the capacity if i do a plus eight it should say that the push fail because the stack is full and um, and we'll do a few minuses if I do a minus another minus another minus if I do another minus so we will see that the order of things is the reverse order and if I do another minus two was the last thing that was the bottom of the stack and if I do another minus I should get an error saying that the pop failed because the stack is empty so if I do anything other than um, other than a proper input I should my program stops I hit an enter so the program stopped so the code itself is pretty self-explanatory so I'm gonna just walk you through it right here all I have is a bunch of messages that I print out I check for whether it's a positive or negative and this is a push fail and pop fail and if you notice what I'm doing is every time I call a push or a pop I call pop here I call a push here I'm always going to check whether R5 has a 0 or 1 if it has a in this case it says check what R5 is if it's positive which means that it's it's a success then go back to the loop because we we don't have any error if it is a failure which is 0 then I will load this failure message and I'll print it out to the screen the same thing here I check if I have a 1 if it's 1 then I print out the number that has been popped if it is a zero, then I will walk through here and print a failure message and branch back to the loop. And if it's anything other than a plus or minus, um, then I'm going to come to the done step, which is this, and I halt my program. I hope this explains what a stack is and how you can use it in practice. Um, there is another example of stack that I have uh, that I will talk about at a later point in time uh, so that you can understand how a stack can be used not just by the system but by an actual problem solving.